I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait any longer. I am really looking forward to Conquest in the next couple days. We're just waiting Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, March 1st, 2021. Conquest is coming to Star Wars Galaxies, and today the developers did an exclusive interview on about two or three platforms out there, and they gave us a lot of intel on a lot of the mechanics in regards to Conquest, and we also got information that the Razor Crest, not only is it going to be a crate reward that we broke down the other day, but you're also going to be able to buy blueprints of the Razor Crest in the new shipment that came to the game, the Conquest Store. So that's kind of a new element. We know so far, we did a video the other day card in the top right-hand corner. And actually, link down below, I created a spreadsheet showing all the reward, create rewards. And as we saw, you get a variety of uh, Razor Crest shards depending on what you got. And But this is not going to be the only way to obtain the Razor Crest. You can also purchase blueprints out of the brand new Conquest Store inside of Galaxy of Heroes. So there might be a way to expedite the farming process through a variety of crystals to help you get more battles done. Because as you get more Conquest credits, you're going to be able to get blueprints. They said that these Mandalorian shards are only temporary. You might see the armor in there. The armor will not be farmable in here, but the Razor Crest will be and this kind of makes sense the other day we did uh we did a whaler field and we showed that the conquest store is capping you on how much currency you can hoard when it comes to this conquest credits right here so this kind of went into our theory that they're going to be adding exclusive units into this shipment so that way you can't hoard like we try to do for other games like the guild event store now once you complete the Razor Crest down the road, you are not going to be able to hoard that currency in hopes of using it for future potential new units that can come along with Conquest. That's kind of the big thing I want to point out there right away. But what we're going to do for the remaining part of this video after that big reveal in regards to the Razor Crest is I want to kind of take you through this amazing guide written by SWH Events. They were one of the people that did an interview with Capo Games. You may have seen it earlier on today a few moments ago. But I want to make sure we go through these deep dive link down below to this article it is a fantastic first look resource beginner guide for this upcoming conquest game they go over for example the energy and a variety of the other elements that i want to talk about especially what happens when you get stuck and uh, it also it also further confirms that we're gonna be able to get the razor crest as a consumable or as a purchasable unit from things like the merchant and the store so here we go we're not going to read everything word by word here but i want to kind of point out a few things here firstly as we saw at the conquest trailer you have to pick a path that you want to go down to try to get as many of the bantha burritos or the tickets to get a better reward crate and you might be asking yourself okay how far ahead can i plan my route and there's going to be a fog of war element which only allows you to see two nodes ahead so you won't be able to see the entire table you have to kind of you only have a, you have a limited view in terms of how far you can plan it which i think is going to be important because at the end of the day when you're planning your run based off my interpretation of this event you want to try to pick the path that you think your roster is going to be more suited for there are going to be some teams as you see it shows you in advance what bosses you're going to face what characters you're going to face and you want to try to pick those teams appropriately and bring in your team that you think can counter and of course you're going to have uh, other consumables to help you give bonuses kind of like galactic challenges to overcome the bosses and other enemies you're going to come across that's kind of the first important thing that you only could see two nodes ahead and this allows you to plan which uh, which enemies you want to fight and which nodes you want to visit for data disc and consumables and we already kind of talked about this uh, with the conquest uh, you're going to be getting these conquest key cards and this kind of goes into our uh our crate review that we did the other day the more cards you get or the more key cards you get the better the rewards you're going to end up getting towards the very end and of course the razor crest is what we're eyeballing but as we're going to see again you're going to be able to get the razor crest shards individually as well and Here's something important to point out. What happens when you get stuck in the game mode? Because if you're going to be some of the lim more limited roster uh, at your disposal, you might get stuck at some point. Well, you can do a few things. If you can't go any farther, they said you are effectively stuck from progressing, but you can still go back to previous events and try to restart them or do some feats that you may have skipped. And also, happy to hear about this. I got a pro tip for you that you will probably want to keep in mind. Your roster isn't going to be locked during conquest you can move mods and gear and level characters if you need to my biggest pro tip anytime i'm doing things like a territory battle or doing things like the challenge rank raid i take the time to remod the team i'm about to do a battle with give them the best 
mods possible. And I know that's kind of an overwhelming task, especially with the lack of mod management. But if you can afford the time or get yourself a nice, uh, organized way of quickly putting your best mods on the team you're about to throw inside of this upcoming Conquest game, I think that's going to be incredibly important to, to be getting the best runs that you possibly can. And another big thing that I want to point out from this paragraph right here, one of the things I pride myself in is I try to make the Galaxy of Heroes experience as enjoyable and helpful with a variety of guys and, of course, the entertainment that comes along with it. But we're not talking about that. Something important is that the modes are going to be, the, the, the individual nodes on a map are going to be dynamically generated, which means most likely we'll, we will not be fighting the same opponents on the same node as another player. And they kind of specifically called us out. That means you most likely won't be able to go to YouTube, Reddit, Discord, the forum post to find the best way to min max your sectors. Everyone is on their own for the most part, but you have data disc uh, draw from a group of options. So while you may have the chance of getting the same data disc as another player, you may get completely different ones. And the boss and map layout, however, will be the same for them. So at least the bosses are gonna be the same, but your journey along the way and what data disc you come across, it's gonna vary depending on what was generated for you. So that's gonna be kind of an element that's gonna be a bit tricky. We're not gonna be able to uh, give generic uh, catch-all advice like with legend events we all go through the same legendary event experience conquest is going to be a little bit more different difficulty what gp do you need to access the normal and the hard mode and they kind of give recommendations but the good thing is is that normal will be available at level 85 and rec recommends very important recommends 1 million gp which in terms of a free-to-play perspective that's about one year of uh, your one year of galaxy of heroes progress but in normal mode you'll be able to access uh, you'll be battling against gear 12 and relic 3 enemies with each sector increasing in difficulty so they only recommend 1 million gp you can still access it. for example my free-to-play account only has 220,000 gp give or take obviously well below the 1 million gp threshold but i can still participate in the event however hard mode a little bit different of a story hard mode will open at 4 million gp which is going to be a hard requirement so you can't just go all willy-nilly and with your 1 million 200 000 gp account go ahead and access hard mode even if you're very efficient let's say you had a 3 million gp roster and you manage to complete max out normal mode do you think you're kind of ready they're not going to let you in to the hard mode you got to be this tall the ride that's basically what they're saying and the difficulty is somewhere around that relic four for uh sector one and once you get to the sector five you're looking at relic eight teams and that's why we're kind of saying chances of a lot of people maxing a hard mode it's most likely not going to be possible and they're forcing you to access you have to play through normal mode before you even try to go to hard mode doesn't matter if you're starting on monday a year from now you got to do normal mode before you move on to the next one and as we see here depending on your gp and your characters the sector should be fairly balanced and a player should be able to get through it one way or another and for instance you shouldn't hit a wall of galactic legends or something unreasonably hard it may take some theory crafting and that's where we get start getting things like the data disc and consumable to do it so there's going to be a big degree of theory crafting involved with this and just to confirm i'm not just pulling stuff out of thin air that initial conquest event will force every player to start on normal difficulty and i understand that you kind of want to get a feel for this game it's going to be something completely different and you don't want to get stuck too early if you jump into hard mode with zero experience not going through normal you're going to most likely not get a lot of rewards and there's going to be a lot of floundering going on so it makes sense they're making you go through the normal first and keep in mind this is going to start on march 1st and no matter if you have 8 million gp like me 4 million gp 200,000, everybody will be doing the normal event first and now we start looking at the new things coming with this and of course we shouldn't be surprised we're playing a mobile game there's got to be a catch and they're going to be making money somewhere not just from you wanting to upgrade your roster there are going to be things you can use your crystals for one of them being the conquest energy let's read this word by word because this is kind of an important statement right here attempting a node will require a new energy type that is specific to conquest each node will cost an amount of energy and from what i'm seeing from other people that we had an interview it seems like it's going to kind of be the refresh is going to be roughly the amount of doing normal energy and from their beta testing that they were able to uh, do in the early testing stage it's about 15 energy per battle again that could have changed but that's some of the stuff i'm seeing out there from the beta testers that uh talk to capital games and then um each node will cost an amount of energy uh, what i heard about 15 and it will refresh throughout the day 
like other energy types, like your Cantina, Mod Energy, you know the drill. And the energy is consumed whether or not you successfully complete the node. So the best way to think about this is just like your light side hard battles. If you failed the battle, you lost that energy, sorry, out of luck. And same thing like Galactic Legends. If you lose the battle, the, your tickets, sorry, out of luck. And important, there is no bonus energy, but it can be refreshed with crystals just like any other type. So this is where you start getting that aspect of whaling obviously we're gonna get a lot of people i'm most likely gonna do it myself because i want to try to test out the razor crest as soon as possible you're gonna refresh your conquest energy to try to get as much done at the table and as a result hopefully get better rewards or more importantly the razor crest and here we got the unit that you're going to be exchanging for a variety of consumables as well as the razor crest and that comes to the conquest credits and they can be used in the new conquest store or there's going to be wandering scavenger nodes and, the, and they, that are scattered throughout the sector and the, here's the important stuff the currency very important right here because this this alters our razor crest timeline the currency can be spent on different things including consumables and blueprints or the razor crest at launch and conquest credits are maxed as we showed at 3500 and you are able to keep them in between events this was i mean I, I saw this from 500 miles away this cap was meant to prevent hoarding so that way you're kind of forced to spend it and whenever they add a new unit down the road for conquest for you to chase after you can't have all this stuff hoarded up to, to start applying to uh the new units they're gonna be forced to buy consumables and gear and uh, blueprints for the razor crest so you don't have a lot of options in terms of hoarding i'll let you guys decide on that i i hate the anti-hoarding thing but in terms of this type event where this is the main event to get the character it's not like galak or uh, malik or general anakin skywalker he spent all this time getting the character you get it to five stars then you gotta get it get get the, get the rest out of the guild event store i didn't like that mechanism if this is solely going to be a conquest thing i can kind of understand why they would cap it but still i'm not a huge fan of stopping individuals from wanting to hoard their currency so they could try to get a character as fast as possible or a new ship in this circumstance and then this is the interesting thing that's coming along with Conquest. We didn't get much intel about it until now. Stamina. We knew the overall idea of stamina is you're only going to use a character so many times. And each time you keep using a character over and over again, their stats diminish more and more and more. But those stats are recoverable over time or through the use of stims that can kind of inject some Jawa juice right back into your character to try to redeem some of those stats back and they're kind of saying to developers that you're not gonna just you can't just use your galactic legends to full clear the entire conquest table you have to either have patience time or bigger roster to accomplish that let's read this kind of an important statement in regards to stamina each character will have their own individual stamina pool and when you complete a battle successfully you spend 10 percent stamina this is the first time we're getting hard concrete numbers for each character that was in that battle and as you lose stamina your characters will lose a percentage of their stats if your character isn't at 100 stamina this is actually kind of helpful you can actually access the menu that shows you how much remaining uh stamina affects the character's stats so if you're at 80 percent stamina how is that going to affect your character how much protection health damage is it going to do i'm assuming like with general anakin skywalker if he only has 10 percent stamina left i'm assuming he's going to hit like a wet noodle at that point so this is kind of important because when you're entering a battle you have limited energy you're going to lose that energy if you lose the battle so you want to be efficient with your attempts you might want to try to bring in units that aren't going to be exhausted in terms of stamina but they said stamina gradually increases over time around one percent per 30 minutes or two percent per hour probably the better way to put it so in the whole day if you let's say completely exhaust the character stamina by the end of the day in 24 hours they should be able to recover 48 percent stamina but there's also opportunities and we already kind of see that in store we'll hop over to the conquest store in a moment but their other way to rejuvenate uh, stats is through the use of stim pack consumables that automatically restore percentage of stamina on a character by using the conquest credits or chris so again there is going to be a degree of whaling on here i could see probably oh man i wonder if there's going to be a cap on how much energy you can refresh i wonder if someone's really determined uh, it seems kind of foolish because you have two weeks to knock it all out but if someone really wants to could they just keep refreshing crystals or do they cap you kind of like normal where you only can go up to like 1800 or something absurd like that and could you just keep buying stuff out of the shipment it's gonna be kind of curious to see but anyways you'll be able to buy the stim packs uh for a character using your conquest credits or consumables and players will definitely want to find ways to manage their stamina across all of their characters and find the balance between stamina and energy spent as you went through so before we move on to the next part going back into that conquest key cards and words let's hop over to the game just so you can see what we have so in the store already i can't buy it at all but you can see you can buy some of these uh, stim packs via conquest credits 
or with crystals and for example this the medium stim pack you can recover 25 percent stamina on a character of your choice and here we have a small one you get 10 percent. i don't think i have a large one but there's a variety of other boosters like increasing your speed again there's gonna be a lot of theory crafting involved in this game mode but in terms of stamina probably gonna be one of the more important elements to keep your eyes for there are gonna be free to play ways and pay to play ways to try to get the most out of your characters and i'm guessing as we get closer to the end of conquest there's probably gonna be an uptick in the amount of whaling trying to squeeze out those extra couple of uh conquest key cards out of the event and speaking of conquest key cards We've already talked about this a little bit. It's very similar to how Galactic challenges it, except you also earn other rewards instantly, such as credits and conquest credits. So you're not waiting. There will be a crate at the end, but there will be some redeemable rewards as you move up the reward ladder. And in order to get the last reward crate, your, uh, your last reward crate, you will most likely need uh, to 100% the entire conquest event, meaning three stars, all the battle, and complete all defeats. And as we already mentioned, you can go back. To previous battles you've done to try to get that third extra star i'm it kind of seems like galactic conquest or uh, galactic challenges meets galactic war meets the light side dark side table you can go back on the light side dark side to try to three star any battles you couldn't do so for most players this means going back and redoing anything that you couldn't max out the first time and each difficulty normal or, or hard will also have different rewards in the crates and we've already kind of broken down all of the reward crates here so again i'll leave links down below to my whaler fail spreadsheet if you want to take a look at this uh spreadsheet yourself and data disc all right so this is what there's a lot involved with this this is kind of how i interpret uh conquest mods i think that's kind of the best way to put it or i think another way to put it is going to be kind of like the bonuses that you get with galactic challenges along the way uh through each sector there'll be a nodes that allows you to choose one data disc out of a few for free and data disc can increase your stats or perform other mechanics to your characters and they will apply stats and mechanics at the same time as abilities now do not before mods and they do stack so you can judge the effects of the data disc and there's a i'll leave a link down below there's a resource page that breaks down every single one that we're aware of right now i'm not going to read all of them right now but in case you're curious you want to get a head start some theory crafting ideas there's a lot of different things that affect term meter, that affect your health that affect your damage your speed your offense be sure to check that out again links down below uh svg events man they have some of the best resources out there for people to use and then once you use a data disc from a stockpile you can equip it and each data disc has a data cost associated with it from one to four and you will have a data capacity which limits the number of data discs you can equip at a time and at launch you're limited to a total capacity of 12 which we can see right up there next to the diamond and to remove a data disc it will cost a small amount of conquest credits they're, they're going to get nickel and dime in a lot of these areas so you'll probably want to find the most versatile data disc you can find that works for a variety of your roster as opposed to getting some data disc for one team so when you're getting data disc you uh yes of course we would love to have one for each individual team but if you got to spend the resource especially credits that you most likely want to use for stim packs or you probably use to speed up your uh razor crest farm you really want to try to make sure you take the most and you kind of play with your data uh, disc as efficiently as possible so uh the rest is kind of straightforward here let's move on to this next part with consumables we already took a little peek for example at the stim packs here data discs are affecting the the bonuses and abilities of your characters whereas consumables are another new concept to the game and these can also be purchased with credits or your crystals to help you during a conquest event and they are available from the wandering scavenger merchant nodes just like how we can get the razor crest and other things that appear in the conquest map as well as in the conquest store and if a consumable has a max duration two or four it is per successful battle consumables do not carry from event to event so you want to make sure that you use them before the event ends so you can't hoard them going into the next conquest you have to use them during the particular conquest that is active and there are different types of consumables we have boosters med packs stim packs and tech where boosters consist of items that increase your stats such as tenacity critical damage med packs can offer protection or health for a certain number of battles and stim packs can recover your stamina by a percent and then tech can apply abilities to allies or enemies from a certain number of battles so it's kind of a close cousin to the data disc but as we see for things for things like stim packs trying to get your stamina back it definitely seems to be more stat oriented 
in regards to the consumables. And again, it's going to have a whaleable aspect to it. So the more you can whale in this stuff, the better your battles are going to be in the very end. And here we get to the Razor Crest one more time before we wrap up this video, because I want to make sure this kind of uh, gets uh, embedded in our minds here. There will be ways to get Conquest fast. Our initial predictions based off the reward crates that we broke down the other day, it seemed like for the person that's going to be maxing out the normal mode right away and then the subsequent hard modes, we were predicting four months or so to unlock the Razor Crest. It is a five-star unlock. Well, with this intel that we have right now, it seems like we're going to be able to speed that up even further. And they're saying, uh, besides being able to get it in the Wandering Scavenger nodes with Conquest credits, uh, or it's going to be also in the crates, they're saying it sounds like this type of release may be similar to how Quill and Ijelvin were released with Galactic Challenges, Galactic Challenges with the goal of the Razor Crest eventually being available in other ways like shipments or notes. So immediate future, it's going to be tied to simply buying it out of the Conquest store, getting it through the reward crates. But down the road, I guess this is a good thing because we want to, we always want to have new goals of uh, big things to farm. If they made it simply uh, just the Razor Crest, Conquest would probably get stale over time. Kind of that's one of the reasons why the AAT raid as well as the Sith raid gets boring because once you have Treya and Kenobi and Han Solo at seven stars, you don't really have a big incentive to play as hard because there's no new character or new unit attached to it. Conquest seems like that, yes, right now Razor Crest is going to be the big thing through reward crates as well as Conquest credits, but down the road they can move it in other ways like shipments or on a note server so it could end up for example on a hard note or a cantina note and then they add a new unit so i like that idea of this being a living event that's going to change with the times and give us new goals and then it's going to move the current thing somewhere else for people to farm again that we're going to wait and see how long until they decide to switch it up and put something else in there but right now the razor crest is the big item so people might be getting the razor crest a lot sooner than our initial projections of four months there's a degree of whaling that you can do in conquest so i'm assuming we're gonna be able to get people to probably unlock it who knows maybe in two months or something that we have to kind of see how about how many credits or conquest credits that we're gonna get how many bl uh, blueprints we'll be able to buy out of shipments and then of course the higher you're doing in uh, conquest the more rewards you're gonna end up getting so guys let's get excited only a few more days around the corner we are definitely going to be streaming day one of this event and seeing how it's gonna go so in the meantime like comment down below on all your thoughts let me know what your thoughts are in regards to all this stuff again links down below to swgot events fantastic beginner guide through their interview and most importantly subscribe so you're not missing a thing because fun for galaxy videos is on the way and most importantly it's great to be in the empire today